मुझे पांचो मुझे पांची राय है वो दोस्त हम सागिर कन या न कन हिते घनो कुछ ससी जे बारे में गाधाय हुआ है या घनो करे ससी जे ही असाने अस्कालर्स रिफर कन था आम है तो ससी शाह गाई आए सिंध जे है बारे सा वो सूर जे के ससी डिठा वो सूर जे के शाह लिखिया अजब सिंध उन्हन सूरन में आए and this is a clairvoyance that he is spoken about. Asamna ke na samjho hai. Ye sura sa sa halanda randa. Jais tahi taha chayo. The andar taha paan na bhiho paani jaya te. Hane aung guzarish kandus Dr. Femida Hussain ke Femida ke taruf ji mohtaj na hai. Mute kudo thoro yo kyo hai. Te jari mo chyo maas hainna kitab jay jay ke सिंधी अंग्रेजी बैठ रहा है जिके अंग्रेजी ट्रांसलेशन है जिके सिंधी बैठ हैं वो मेहरबानी करें गोले जो तो तुर्ती कम यो करें नहीं मुझे नंदी भेड़ा है वड़े अत्राम सा और फैमिला के मानवारा साथियों आया तो जेडे दुहादार तकरीर का पोगाल है थोड़ो डप पे लगे मुझे पहन जो बच्चों आए मुझे बारह नौ अंगूर है मुझे बच्चे नौ अंगूर है मुंह किताब ते लिखी हुई है ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ पोइट्री में बी डिफाइन्ड एस ट्रांसक्रीएशन in, mother, in another language, because the translator has to feel the depth of emotions, absorb several layers of meanings, understand figurative language with metaphors, having typical cultural context of a nation, and then create such a poem in the target language that conveys the essence of the original poetry without losing its aesthetic beauty and artistic value. So we can say that translation of great poetry needs research, practice, and creativity, and most of all, great passion. When I started reading the book, I saw myself by Shabnam Virmani and Vipul Rikhi. It occurred to me that they have conducted thorough research before transcreating Shah Latif's poetry with great passion and creative ability. The purpose of writing this book seems to me an effort to get the glimpse of a whole new world beyond linguistic boundaries. And that was because the authors understand that the people on the two sides of the border share the legacy and spirit of mysticism the bhakti on one side and Sufism on the other. Kabir and Mirabai there, and Shah Latif and Sachal Sarmast here. Shabnam and Vipul claim to have come across the great poet of Sindh in the land of Kutch in India, where he resides in the hearts of his Kutchi Sindhi followers and lovers, who recite his abhyat and sing his vais with great passion and admiration. And through them, both of these authors claim to have traversed through the world of the poet and with him through their own selves, as if they had entered into the world of their own souls. They felt as if they were traveling with Sasui on the road or with a road to cage or with Sony floating on an unbaked pitcher in the mighty river. They even saw themselves looking for wandering yogis of Ramkali on their way to Hinglaj in their spiritual quest for salvation after detachment from the worldly relations. This travel inside one's own self is the main theme of this book 
where each one of them, Shabnam and Vipul, individually chant, I saw myself. Through this travel, they have tried to find their eternal connection to the absolute truth to which they want to ultimately unite. Through the Risalo, they claim to have walked into the universe of Latif that leads them to the path of the beloved through Sufi thought via Shah Jorag. And I ask you, today's audience in this hall, doesn't that sound familiar to you? Shah, the Sufi, who takes you to the spiritual journey within Shah, the Murshid, the Peer, the Buzrik Sayyid, who created and recited his verses that purify your souls, that make you aware of yourself and lead you to your creator. Khud shanasi ma, khuda shanasi. Shabnam and Vipul also felt the same way. And I wondered why they were not led to the realities of life. Why did they only think about the metaphysical and not the physical world in which Shah lived or we live today? Is Latif not a poet of this world? Is he not a humanist, a social reformer, a thinker who is the ultimate guide of people, especially of Sindhis? Did he not bring about enlightenment in the Sindhi society, <clears throat> or which was uh, the Sindhi society which was rigid socially, politically, and religiously in that era? Yes, he was a Sufi. There is no doubt about that. But in my opinion, he used Sufism as a means to enlighten the people of this, his homeland. For him, it was a social movement against intolerance and discrimination on the basis of caste, creed, faith, gender, etc. <clears throat> he preached equality, love, and peace for humanity, reciting, rejecting the rigidity of the clergy of his times. But then I proceeded further reading the book, I found out that the authors did see that aspect as well, which is evident from these words on page eight, and I quote, the Risalo is a poignantly ultimate chronicle of Sindhiyat and its multi-layered topographies, literary, socio-political, cultural, emotional, physical and metaphysical, unquote. Shabnam and Vipul seem to have been captivated in the dream world of Latif through his rag. They, they roam in this universe and feel as if they could also converse with the land of Sindh, its mountains, trees, and clouds, just as Sasui did. Dungara das supriya jo kafan diye ko. Oh mountain, why don't you speak? Tell me if my beloved passed this way. Badho ki mavana ucha dungara matheo. Trees stop growing. Mountains don't be tall. They seem to be impressed by the personification of nature in Charlotte's poetry. In this book, the authors have also appreciated the strange and unique quality of the poet speaking through his female characters, Sasri Suni, the seven Surmis, or heroines, the legendary women of this land. The pain, suffering, and longing expressed through them touches the hearts of the audience. Through this book, we have also been introduced with one more legendary woman, Ram Kali. As the eighth Surmi of Shah Latif, on page 96, it is written that, I quote, although Ramkali is not one of the seven heroines of Shah's verses, the details of her legend come to fore through Abdullah Bhai, an oral scholar of Kutch. <clears throat> According to him, Ramkali was a Sindhi princess. Yeah, <clears throat> 
who was a young girl who wanted to learn tilsim or magic her father the king summoned his courtiers they informed him that the only people who could teach her magic were the yogis who belong to north panth <clears throat> the yogis were invited who pitched their camps on the palace ground lighting their dhunis or log fire symbolic of a fire they keep burning within the young princess eagerly ran to them each morning to learn some secret arts the yogis gave ramkali a powerful glimpse into her spiritual practice and philosophy of detachment bukha vidau bugre yogi kanda junya talab na rakhan tam ji otiopian unya lahu tin agi sunya basau ke vejha tha and they translate <clears throat> they fill their warehouses with hunger the yogis care not for food they guzzle down thirst however one day the princess woke up to find that the yogis had disappeared the only signs of them were the small drink dhunis in suramkali she laments the sudden departure of the yogis after that she left her high palace and became a yogan ya jogan bari jin bari aun na ji andi unare they have lit a fire in my soul i cannot live without them unquote in my opinion this ramkali may be a mythical character like meera bai as nowhere in sindhi literature whether oral or written we find such a character or legend according to professor kalyan advani ramkali is a classical indian raga whereas ane baloch calls it sindhi ramkali sung along with jog rag the authors of this book have compared the vairag or the detachment of shah latif with that of ramkali when he had left home with the yogis but in the end they had abandoned him according to them latif's own life mirrors ramkali's tale in the risalo he also yearns for the yogis company and longs for the way of the being juz vinayo jogin kulasi ahin kam asan jin adam aun ji andi unare they have merged the part with the whole they built their abode beyond time and space i cannot live without them so far so for shabnam and vipul it is also the journey within in quest for finding their own selves through the poetry of shah latif and i once again wonder who will translate or redefine shah latif's poetry in a manner to tell that the journey is also in quest for this world here and not only for hereafter the journey out there on the globe not within within only don't we need to redefine shalati for one for our youth in the context of this real world rather than the imaginary world of the sufis and yogis i wish some day some translator will focus on the historical social political humanistic and other temporal or worldly issues missed out by most of the translators and instead of defining the philosophy of detachment they will find the deep meanings where shah latif calls for persistent struggle sacrifice and strong will to achieve one's goal or aim of life and lead a successful life in this competitive world thank you live hd quality coverage sirf aur sirf electronic diary de sindhu pehriu web broadcast network electronic diary